Hi folks, welcome to NASA Launchpads. I'm your host, Vince Whitfield. The year was 1969. The anticipation was high. The impossible had become possible. The world was united with a footstep and a single phrase. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission lifted off from Kennedy Space Center, carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins on what would become one of the biggest engineering feats of all time, humans setting foot on the surface of the moon. On July 20th, 1969, just four days later, the lunar module, also known as the Eagle, began its descent onto the moon. Astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin quickly realized they were passing lunar landmarks about four seconds early, which meant the Eagle would land kilometers west of its targeted landing point. The new landing spot was going to put them on the edge of a huge crater. To complicate things, the lunar module's navigation computer sounded several unusual alarms, distracting the crew. An overload had occurred where two radar systems were powered up, causing the computer system to go haywire. So, Neil Armstrong took semi-automatic control of the module's auto-descent. With Buzz Aldrin calling out velocity data and altitude, the Eagle safely landed on the moon's surface with a mere 25 seconds of fuel left. The Apollo 11 crew touched down in the Sea of Tranquility, a relatively smooth and level area, at least for the moon, on the northern hemisphere. I can see the puzzled looks on some of your faces. Sea of Tranquility? Actually, the name is translated from the Latin Mare Tranquilliatis. These large dark areas of the moon had mistakenly been named seas because they looked like large bodies of water from Earth. The name stuck, even after early pictures of the moon showed no water on the rocky surface. A mare is kind of like a flat plain here on Earth. And this site had been carefully chosen over a host of other possibilities, with relatively few craters and boulders allowing for an easy descent, and no large hills, high cliffs, or deep craters that could interfere with the lunar module landing radar, the site seemed a good choice, and the resulting images were breathtaking. After the moon landing came the most exciting moment, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to walk on a planetary body other than Earth. Although the first moonwalk wasn't scheduled to occur until July 21st, 1969, a day after the astronauts had landed on the moon, the excited team, unable to sleep and feeling no ill effects from their landing, took that first leap of faith on July 20th at 10.56 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. In order to capture the images of mankind's first step on the moon, Armstrong pulled a special ring that automatically deployed the television camera. Armstrong later reported that they had very little trouble, in fact much less trouble than they expected after landing. Because little was known about the surface of the moon, the astronauts did not know what to expect when they made that first step. Would they sink in soft dirt up to their knees? Would they be able to move easily? They were pleasantly surprised to find only a few centimetres of dusty soil on top of a hard surface. And by learning to use what Aldrin would later call a standard loping technique of one foot in front of the other, and planning their steps before actually taking them, Moving across the lunar landscape wasn't as hard as they anticipated either. But it wasn't just a casual stroll through the park, or rather the moon. The crew had a timeline and several important tasks to complete. One of their moonwalking missions included collecting lunar samples, and the crew collected about 21 kilograms worth. Another mission for the Apollo 11 astronauts was to perform experiments, so they dug their heels into the moon dust and got started on some science. The soil mechanics investigation studied the properties of lunar soil information, which aided in future Apollo missions. The crew had a limited time to work on the lunar surface, so some experiments were simply deployed and later monitored from Earth by radio telemetry. The laser ranging retro reflector was another experiment that enabled scientists to accurately measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon, which by the way is an average of 384,403 kilometers from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. The lunar dust detector was an experiment that was deployed to see how much lunar dust accumulated on the other experiments over time and how radiation affected them. This was considered more of an engineering experiment rather than a science one. During their 21 hour, 38 minute and 21 second visit to the Moon, the two men spent just two and a half hours walking on the lunar surface. And when the time was up, it was time for a lunar liftoff. Before leaving the lunar surface, Buzz Aldrin tossed into the moon dust a tiny cloth sack containing a gold replica of an olive branch, an Apollo 1 mission patch, and a silicon disc inside an aluminum capsule. Roughly the size of a half dollar, the disc contained messages of peace and goodwill from leaders and respected people from around the globe. Also left behind an American flag, and this plaque. It says, 
here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. And so, history was made. Thanks for watching NASA Launchpad. I'm Vince Whitfield. Until next time, cheers.